is alone in our prayer closet with him. I want to tell you, 99.9% of all issues that we deal with would be resolved. God can do more in the prayer closet in our lives than in any other setting. Any other setting. And so tonight... I've got a, a very important task. I've got a very important responsibility. I'm not going to try to move you emotionally. I'm not going to try to preach. I'm going to communicate. But hopefully, when you walk out of this building, coupled with what only God can do, there will be a fresh desire in you to get alone with him. Amen. We lift your hands. Can you just love him one more time? Can you pray that prayer right now, Lord? Would you impart in me tonight a fresh passion for prayer? Could somehow, Lord, I realize there's no other need that's any greater? Somehow, Lord, help me understand I need you, not just want you, I need you, that without you I can do nothing. And Lord, if, if somehow, if somehow in my heart and in my mind would be the understanding that I need you every day, not just some days, not just a few times in a week, I need you every day of my life. Lord, somehow grant that tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Bishop, again, thank you so much for allowing us to come and partner with you and your great staff and Pastor Timothy and Sister Leah, and all of the leaders, all the church. Thank you. Uh, I've never been in a place that I've felt more loved. I've felt more uh, I guess, at home, <laughs> outside of home. Uh, Matthew 6, verse number 5. <clears throat> and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Does anybody know what that is? They were seen. That was their reward. Men saw them. Verse 6. Will you read with me? But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. Along with that, if you would go with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 15. 
Luke chapter 15. Verse number 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose, and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and fell. Excuse me, his father saw him, had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for thy son was dead and is alive again and he was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. I want to preach tonight or teach tonight on a subject that I think is so incredibly important in our walk with God. And I hope to bring some, not just balance, but maybe uh, some understanding that I think we've not always had when it comes to our prayer life. And I want to talk on the importance of your prayer closet. The importance of your prayer closet. Maybe I should say the importance of our. What I mean when the reason I'm using your or our, I mean it in a singular tense, not just collective. Tonight is not about collective prayer. Tonight is not about intercession. Tonight is about the thing that's most important if you're going to go to heaven. And that's your consistent relationship with Jesus. And if you do not pray, you don't have one. That's like saying, I have a relationship with people I never spend time with. Impossible. It's not possible. Consistent. Everybody say consistent. Life is made up of found, of foundational laws and principles. You do understand that. In the kingdom of God, there is no substitute for consistent daily prayer. Would you say the word consistent? Would you say the word daily? Would you say the word daily? Would you say the word consistent? You can't substitute that. You can't put a price tag on that. There's not enough money you can pay to ever replace that. There's not enough things you can do. There's not enough religious activity you can be involved with. There aren't enough home Bible studies you can teach. There's not enough messages you could preach. There's not not anything that substitutes your consistent daily prayer. Prayer is foundational. Would you say that with me? Prayer is foundational. And there must not be any practice you attempt to substitute for it. I keep using that term substitute. And the reason I use that term is because I have found out personally it is much easier for me being busy doing the work of God 